Uh, for the next three to five years, we think it's important to think of China as, as transitioning from a dominant contributor of world growth to still a strong contributor, in that China is running into some secular headwinds. They have an economy that's been very reliant on rapid debt growth, and they're looking to rebalance and become less reliant on that uh, going forward. And that will slow growth in the same way that it slowed growth for the last several years in advanced economies. And the other factor is that China is uh, facing a demographic headwind. Uh, instead of having a rapidly growing working age population, they're at the point where it's beginning to shrink. So those two things we think will mean that China will slow down from high single digit types of growth rates uh, to something closer to 6% on average over the next uh, three to five years. That will have the impact of, uh, of, of, of slowing world growth, but remember that uh, there's also a pickup in the advanced economies uh, happening at the same time as they return to potential levels of growth. So net-net, uh, we still think world growth, uh, the world growth outlook improves with that type of scenario. Emerging market economies uh, have been undergoing uh, some difficult times in terms of growth in general, even those economies that uh, have very strong balance sheets. Over the next few years, we think that many of those economies uh, will begin to return to potential levels of growth, in that they've already begun structural adjustment programs, uh, which should enhance uh, medium-term growth prospects. They will also uh, find it easier to grow in a world that has a more rapid, uh, advanced economy growth. The mix of those factors means that uh, potential growth rate can be achieved once again, uh, particularly for those emerging economies that don't have uh, other uh, structural drags or particular pot political problems to deal with. There's also the issue of uh, the political cycle, uh, and it's important to note that many emerging market economies you know, have important elections taking place this year, and that means that uh, their responsiveness to the current environment is probably slowed. So once we get past that, we think that once again, they'll return to uh, optimizing the growth dynamic for the years ahead, and that's where we, we expect um, countries with the best uh, you know, the best fundamentals on the, on the debt uh, and, and uh, inflation side to really prosper. For global bond investors, the opportunity in the years ahead are to take advantage of the multi-speed world and that no longer will we see so many economies with a high degree of uh, correlation in terms of their monetary policy or economic development. We'll begin to see some differences. Some countries will be normalizing interest rates uh, and that means one should be more defensive in positioning with respect to bond risk in those countries, while other countries will still be uh, applying more monetary stimulus. Markets very often overshoot in both cases. So for a, an investor with a global opportunity set, uh, there are risks, but there are also rewards to this type of environment. One needs to think about playing defense and playing offense, but there'll be plenty more in terms of uh, opportunities for alpha generation uh, in the years ahead. So the opportunity set looks good relative to the average environment.